And now we get to finally go to an actual Disney World. But first, uh, gummy ship stuff. But again, I, I I believe I did mention this, but I'm only gonna show off um, about two or three of these missions. Probably like this one, the one before the Olympus Coliseum, and then the final one. Are probably gonna be the only ones I show up. Because the one before the Olympus Coliseum is one of my favorites. And I'm only gonna show this little sequence once. Because it's the same every time. Little startup sequence. So where are we exactly? Like, where is this? Where is this, like, garage? Is it just, like, floating in space? Or... I don't know. It's not a Disney castle, because we haven't unlocked that world yet. Oh, well. And also, it seems like we launched right to the gate from this place. Yeah, so the thing about the gummy ship missions in this game is that they're actually, um, fun. Yeah, crazy, I know. <laughs> Especially compared to the first game, Jesus Christ. I mean, like, yeah, it's not like it's addictive or anything, but compared to the first game, it's a, it's a fucking masterpiece. Because, you know, there's, it's, it's, you know, all this action going on. There's all these ships, they're... Firing at you constantly, you got dodged, or all this, there's all this stuff going on in the background, there's a lot of missions to do that are a lot more, you know, a lot more clear cut than the ones from uh, the first game, and uh, there's a lot more models, you can unlock a lot of models that are actually useful. Uh, unfortunately, of course, you don't get anything that can actually help you outside the gummy missions, but I don't know why you would. And also, apparently, the I assume these ships are nobody ships. I mean, they don't have a the nobody insignia, but I don't know. Either way, they're either heartless or nobodies. Are are oh that oh, that one has a nobody si uh, symbol on it. Yeah, so I guess they're just like little dusks inside little ships. I think that's a, a very silly idea. But yeah, so uh, yeah, and of course each one is very unique and very different. They're Always turning around, you can get new items by killing special enemies, there are little boss battles or mini bosses. Uh, yeah, like there are gold and red enemies that will give you special items if you manage to kill them. You can get metal ranks and stuff, it's all very fun. You know, miles and miles better than the one from the first game. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, but see, and of course the gummy ships. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just waiting to see what they're like in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. You know, if they're if they're this good in this game, oof, they're gonna be fucking. Ad I I assume they're gonna be addictive in Kingdom Hearts 3. My God. Yeah, and the the uh, gummy ship building is a lot easier to maneuver through than the one in the first game, which is I never really managed to work it out very well. Of course, I never really tried that much, but still. Yeah, look at all this. It's so exciting, compared to the one from the first game, at least. Like, again, yeah, by today's standards, this is nothing special, but... I'll take this over any of the missions from the first game any day of the week. And I think that should be it, right? Yep, there we go. Yeah, and then, uh, you'll unlock a couple of, uh, model missions first, and then models, right? Yep, see, so like, high win level one. Falcon level 1, and then when you keep doing more missions, you'll unlock level 2, level 3, level 4, and they'll get better and better. And better looking too, they're, they're, uh, some of the designs are pretty good. Now we're gonna go to the uh, Land of Dragons, aka China. I mean, they actually like flat out say China at some point, so it's just like, oh geez, too many real world locations. Oh, no, oh, this, is, this, is this is not a good start. Sora, was that you? Oh no, God, Shen Yu, man, oh my God, he is like one of the worst Disney villains. I'm sorry, he is. He he like just barely escapes like the bottom five Disney villains for me, cause he's at number six. I actually kind of like the shadow effect here for Mushu. And I, I really do love this movie, though. It's one of my favorite of the more modern Disney films. When I say modern, I mean anything, like, from the 90s onward. I consider more modern. But yeah, this is, like, probably, like, my... Probably in my top five favorite of the modern films. Maybe. Top three, maybe. 
Yeah, here uh, Goofy starts to kind of show off his wisdom here. Cause the kind of it's kind of like a joke that he's like the smartest of the trio. He's just like more observant. Like, see here. I mean, he's right. I think Sora just wants to go see that fire real quick. Oh, come on, they don't even have their weapons drawn. If it was a Heartless, they'd be fucked. Uh. Yep, here's Mushu. Back from the first game, where he was just a summon. And I love it because they talk about how, like, they know each other so well, and how they kicked all- how Mushu says they kicked all sorts of bad guy butt together. But, like, I literally used him one time. Ever. In the playthrough. <laughs> just ever. Not just in the playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 1, just ever. Yeah, so whenever I played this game, like when I was a kid, it was just like, yeah, I never used you. Sorry, Mushu. You're useless to me. Something like that. And you are? I'm Mulan. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I, I mean, Ping. Ah, yes, yeah, the most like generic name you could pick. Just Ping. <laughs> Fa Ping. Fa Ping. Fapping. Fapping? What? Mushu's one of my family's. Guardians. Like, isn't like Fa Ping like some sort? Wait, no. I should probably, like, make sure about this before I say it. Because I think Fa Ping might be, like, some... Based off of some kind of Chinese, like... Um... Like... God, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway. Like, some kind of, like, a... Wordplay or something like that. We gotta go find the other recruits over at the training camp. Would you join us? It'll be easier to fit in if I'm with guys like you. What do you mean, fit in? Well, uh, uh, don't, don't worry about that. You're pretending to be a boy, aren't you? Ah, see, Goofy, he's the observant one. Huh? You're a girl? You know, I don't know if I... <laughs> I don't know if she should be insulted or flattered. Not me. <laughs> you totally don't look like a girl at all. <laughs> you look like such a manly man, <laughs> Mulan. Uh, yeah, I know. I don't know if she should be like insulted or flattered that her disguise works so well, or insulted that they cons seriously consider her to be a boy. Yeah, but I think Fa Ping might be some kind of a, uh, uh, like uh, lingo or something in China that like means something like offensive a little bit, like a joke. But I'm gonna make sure about it before I actually say what it is. But that'll probably not be till the second uh, visit to this world. Oh uh, yeah, you can switch out party commands without uh, weighing until you're outside of battle now. That's a nice little change from the first game. Where you could only do it from the pause menu. But here you can just do it whenever you want. That's a nice change, I like that. Yeah, that's weird. I got the ether before I even opened the chest. What a weird little glitch. Yeah, I don't use, I'm, I'm usually pretty lucky with games. I tend not to get very many glitches. And when they are, they're usually very, very small. Like that. Like, oh, I got an ether a second early. What kind of man is she hanging around? Where they walk like that? Uh, yeah, men walk like normal people, Mulan. Just saying. Oh, jeez. Oh, he just fucking slugged him in the face. It's so weird to see something like that. Just someone get slugged. Yeah, it's actually kind of weird to see Donald go like berserker. Cause like, wasn't that kind of like his, like, shtick in the old cartoons where he would kind of get pissed off and just go on a fucking rampage? But he doesn't really do that very often. This is like the only time he does that. Uh, shenanigans. Recycled animations, ahoy. Only girls ever say please. I'll knock your block off in a second there, shorty. Yeah, even Sora's taller than this guy. Panda lips. Hey, it's a captain. Yeah, I kind of missed... I, I'm a little bit sad they don't have that pencil pusher guy. Or, I, don't, I don't even know his, what his position was. You know, the guy with the wispy mustache who, like, was like everyone always like made fun of and stuff. I don't know what he was exactly, but I kind of miss him. He was funny. Hey, Heartless. 
And then they run away. Thank you, guys. Ping, I hope you're ready. Yeah, and of course, uh, Mulan, or uh, Ping, is completely useless in battle. Which is kind of the whole, like, like the whole, like, empowerment, being who you are thing. Because once she becomes Mulan, she actually becomes, you know, competent and useful. And you can uh, unlock her limit attack. Yeah, I do love this. Uh, not only do they not, does he not seem to care about a giant walking uh, duck and dog, but he allows them into the Chinese army. Along with a kid who clearly is not Asian at all. Like, I don't know, Sora's like just, he's tropical, he's like a tropical islander, right? Not Asian, right? Or at the very least, he's not Chinese, that's for damn sure. <laughs> I will let this anime-looking kid into the army. It's, I'm sure nothing will happen. Yeah, he really picks on Ping. It's kind of annoying. Like, the entire, like, like the first, like, ten minutes of this world is just trying to prove to him that Ping is useful. Which he actually isn't, so, I mean, there we go. Or she, whatever. Doesn't this constitute as meddling? I mean, we're literally partaking in a war right now. Just saying. <laughs> I guess they really dropped the whole, oh, can't meddle in the affairs of other worlds. I guess they really just dropped that <laughs> uh, little aspect of the story. Again, we are literally participating in a war right now. Like, I don't know how, how you can get more meddlesome than this. Okay, so you basically just have to go fight three rounds of Harmless, essentially. It's really not too interesting, but it's not that bad. <sighs> but anyway, I guess I might as well just go over the uh, voice actors. Uh, but the the cool thing is that uh, every character and every character with dialogue, uh, voice dialogue, in this world, aside from Mushu and uh, Shan Yu, um, their uh, voice actors are reprising their role from the movie. So Mulan, uh, Li Shang, Yao, Ling, Shen Po, the Emperor. That's a, that's pretty nice. So anyway, Mulan is voiced by Ming Ming Na Wen. Uh, she voiced Ellen Yin from The Batman, and also Finn's mom from Adventure Time. Uh, Mushu is Mark Mosley. I think that's how it's pronounced. He's kind of like the replacement Eddie Murphy. Like whenever like basically every t any time after the first movie from. Basically, anytime Mushu gets voiced aside from the first movie, it's uh, this guy. And also, anytime Donkey has a voice acting role outside of the main Shrek movies, it's this guy too. So he's pretty much just the replacement, uh, Eddie Murphy. He was also uh, President Sh uh, Schwarzenegger from the Simpsons movie. Uh, Captain Lee Shang is uh, uh, Bradley. I can't read my own handwriting. I think it's Wan Tan? Let me I should look that up. Let's see here. Yeah, sorry, my handwriting's not too good. Uh, uh, hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, Brad. Oh, Bradley Wong. Oh yeah, that was a scribble. Wow, I'm pretty bad. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, Bradley Wong. Yes. Okay, Yao, the short red guy, is Harvey F uh, Fierstein, I believe. Uh, he's Carl from The Simpsons. Not the black Carl, but the. Carl character from a Simpson and Delilah episode and he's the fat cat burglar from Food Fight. Yeah, I just I felt like that was worth mentioning. Ling is a uh, Getty uh, Watanabe, I believe that's how it's pronounced. And Shen Po is uh, Jerry Todu? Uh, to to the Emperor is, uh, let's see, he's Pat Morita who you may know as uh, Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid movies. And apparently there was actually a TV show where he voiced uh, Miyagi. Uh, and then Shan Yu is uh, Corey Burton. Because he's everywhere in this fucking series. Wow, I did a lot of name slaughtering over there. I apologize. <laughs> oh god, no, Sora. <laughs> he's lighting the whole camp on fire. His pyromania cannot be quenched. He's a madman. Someone stop him. Take away his magic spells. Oh, boy. It's disastrous. Yeah, again, I do apologize for those last name slanderings. I'm pretty bad at that. And my own handwriting is terrible. 
Anyway, but yeah, so I don't I don't really mind the whole morale system because it drops slow enough where it isn't really too much of a problem. And uh, aren't these guys based off of Japanese folklore? I could have sworn they are. Because I've seen enemies in the Mario series are like these guys. And I thought it was a Japanese thing. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, you know, because Nintendo, Japanese company, so I assumed any kind of like... You know, monster based off of mythology would be more of a Japanese kind. But whatever. Shut up, Pain. Just do not speak. He's just mad. He just doesn't like Pain because uh, he makes him feel feelings he doesn't enjoy. Don't worry, Captain. It turns out you're actually straight. Not that there's anything wrong with not being straight. Yeah, again, I just love how this guy accepts a non-Chinese person, a duck, and a dog into the army. I love that. He just does not give a single shit. Ah, uh, it's hilarious. But hey, uh, I mean, <laughs> desperate times call for uh, desperate measures, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, I, I know, I know, like, no, no one really acknowledges the fact that Goofy and Donald are giant walking, talking animals, but, in this world is, I feel like it's just the most humorous, because it's, you know, they're signing up for the Chinese army. You know, so you would think that the captain would make sure that everyone's a Chinese person, and, you know, human. Yeah, I do like the little firework thing. You can get some drive orbs, which is useful, and also they can kind of hurt enemies, but yeah, but the chances of the enemy being close enough for that to be useful it doesn't really come up very often. And it's still a nice touch. And I do like the the swirly cloud effect. I do like that. You know, because it's China. I guess smoke in Chinese art has that swirly effect, I guess? I'm not really sure. Yeah, but then uh, I think this is the last mission that has the morality gauge, I believe. Or one of the last ones. Just gotta get through this mountain, busting Heartless on the way. All that jazz. Uh, yeah, but again, the or, I, I'm not really sure if the morality meter drops faster on harder difficulties. I mean, I assume it would, but I'm not 100% positive on that. And it's, it's a good idea to kill all the Heartless before trying to move on, because chances are they'll hit you when... Uh, knock you out of your rock smashing uh movements oh yeah and uh yeah you should really you should open up every chest you see in this game because there's a couple of synthesis items where you can most easily get them from a treasure chest i mean yeah i think most of the ones you can find in chests are dropped by enemies too for the most part but, like, obviously some aren't, like Ori Calcums, but still, it's it's probably easier to just open every chest you uh, come across and get the synthesis items in there. And, of course, that's only if you're, like, you know, someone who likes to use synthesis and wants the ultimate weapon. Which, again, I will make sure to get. I mean, I probably won't even use it except for, like, the last boss battle because the decisive pumpkin is better. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure... Well, as long as you have a lot of combo pluses, I'm pretty sure the Decisive Pumpkin is more powerful than the Ultimate Weapon. Because of its uh, effect uh, with combos. And I hate these things, these Centaur motherfuckers. Ugh. Yeah, I, I like to hit them from afar with my uh, Blizzard attacks. When, I'm, uh, when I still have some MP to spare. Because they will juggle you around. See, like that. They'll, they'll juggle, you, juggle you around like a... I don't know, like something that gets juggled around a lot. Thanks for the help, you three. Could it, you know, could use some backup. You know, just saying. Thanks. Oh, what a girl. Ugh. <laughs> when will Captain Sama notice me? And why am I saying Sama when we're Chi when we're Chinese? Oh, go shut up. We're the only four doing anything. I like, seriously, like, none of the other soldiers are doing a fucking thing. At least Ping's going out there and fighting. <laughs> that makes, uh, him better than every other soldier you got, you dumbass. Again, I think the captain's just a little bit, uh, 
pissed off because ping makes him feel things. Yep, and uh, now this little Chinese village, which has no citizens in it. I don't know, maybe they all fled or something. What, you know what Shan Yu looks like? No, oh, that's convenient. Yeah, so remember in the first game when you said you want to get a medal in the affairs of other worlds? Just saying. <laughs> eh. Yeah, because they don't really have much of a reason to be here. Yeah, think about it. a lot of the times in Worlds, they don't have too much reason to stick around. Or, you know, to go there in the first place. Because, or I guess just to open up more paths? Or like to just kind of vaguely go after Organization 13 or the Heartless? Because there's no keyholes for them to seal in this game. All, all they do is open up paths to other worlds. So I, I guess that's their... Uh, that's the reason why they go to other worlds, but the the reason for them to go into each and every world and exploring and all that stuff is a little bit uh, lessened in this game than it is in the first one. Yeah, a little bit annoying is that you don't recharge every, uh, your entire HP or MP bar when you step in the little circle. You gotta wait for it. Though then again, I suppose the slow filling uh, makes training uh, makes training a uh, uh, getting to level 99 a lot easier because you gotta remain at low HP But you can still step in a safe circle if you're getting too low on health to help uh, boost it up to Acceptable levels that'll still let you get the experience boost Yeah, I'm not really sure what this is some kind of little temple I guess I don't know who lit all these candles and the incest Incense whatever I don't know why there's blue fire. Yeah, there's nothing here. <laughs> why are they sticking around anyway? Wait up, I say as I stand here and not move. Huh. So apparently Shan Yu has barrier uh, powers. That's pretty convenient. <laughs> Silent laughter. Yeah, but seriously, Shan Yu is so fucking boring. Like, even in the movie, the guy says, like, maybe 30 words. And he doesn't, he doesn't even get a fucking villain song. Come on. Even Ratcliffe had villain song, a villain song. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Eh. But hey. Uh, still, I, that's just me, though. I, I never really... I, I find him very forgettable, you know? There's some Disney villains that are just not very remem uh, worth remembering, and he's one of them. Another, of course, being, again, Ratcliffe. And, uh, let's see. Uh, God, what was that villain's name from The Rescuers? The the woman with the crocodile? It was like, they, they called her, like, Medusa or something, didn't they? I vaguely remember that, but I don't know. Maybe. And, uh... Yeah, and then the other ones in my bottom five are Hans from Frozen, uh, the sheep secretary girl from Zootopia, and uh, how was the other? Ratcliffe, Medusa, the two shitty 3D villains. Yeah, what was the last one? Nah, whatever, who cares. Oh yeah, Edgar, that butler guy from the Aristocats. They all suck. Oh come on! I didn't. I did all the fucking work. Pain didn't do a damn thing. Yeah. So like a lot of the motivation in this world is just making sure Ping looks good for the captain. Because again, Sora's meddling way too much in the affairs of other worlds to stick into this war. Just saying. Well, then again, they're all heartless everywhere. So whatever. And again, they really did drop the whole concept of. Uh, uh, meddling after the first game, so. Oh, jeez. Sora, did you do this somehow? Oh, man, I wish I had set that fire. I feel like it would be hard to burn a village to the ground in a snowy area like this, but whatever. <laughs> Turns out he just has a stomach ache. He ate some bad, uh, I don't know, he ate some bad something. 
overdo it, Captain. It's just a scratch. Yeah, you're not even bleeding. Quit being a pussy. Captain, the enemy. Where did they go? They went toward the summit. We'll stop them. It kinda is our fault. Not really. Right. Oh yeah, Mushu just goes out in the open right in front of the captain. Just saying. You mean my fault? <laughs> Ping! What's that uh, weird lizard thing that came out of your armor? And then he vanishes. If you track down the villagers, we'll hand oh no, the villagers are dead, Sora. They've, they've been burnt to a crisp. Sorry. You can see their charred skeletons in the rubble. Let's go. Yeah, see, that's another... See, I kind of mentioned this before, how it like, pans to the way you're supposed to go. Like, gee, I wonder how I get to the summit, huh? Where the fuck were you? Yeah, wait, it was one guy. They couldn't stop him? I guess he probably had Heartless, too. Yeah, I guess these, I guess I always assume that the, these little, again, I, I want to call them Bumblebees. These little Heartless, I always assume they were, um, Hun soldiers that Shan Yu turned into Heartless. I, I just always assume that, just to make things fit well, I suppose. Kind of like how Captain Hook's Pyrus got turned into Heartless, or... That's what I always like to believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'll be able to show off anti form at some point. The problem with it is, it's just uh, you know, it's random, you know, so there's no guarantee you'll get it. Of course, uh, once you get the, I think it's called the two become one Keyblade after you uh, beat Roxas, it'll be a lot easier to go into that form. In, in fact, it's pretty much impossible not to at that point. Thanks to its special effects. I always, I always imagined that, like, hat on his head was a, like, for a raccoon. Because it's all striped. I don't know. <laughs> I know it definitely probably is. Are there even raccoons in China? I don't know. Yeah, that was, like, one of, like, ten words that Shan Yu says in this game. Um, then again, since Corey Burton voices like half the Disney f cast in this series, <laughs> I guess it, you know it's fine because he's you know Yen Sid and uh, Sark and the uh, Master Control, the the Master Computer guy and the uh, Tron. What was it, NCP Master Control Program or was it Master Control Unit? I can never remember. Yeah, yeah and of course Ping, uh, Donald, and Goofy just vanish from the narrative for you know a minute. For no real reason. Yeah, where are they? They just dished me the pieces of shit. Yeah, I, I don't like it when this happens. Where McDonald, Goofy, and whatever Disney partner you ha Disney partner you had just vanish for no reason. I mean, if there's like with the barrier that came up in the cave, like yeah, that was a reason at least. You know, it was a kind of a dumb one, but it, it was a reason. But here it's just oh, they're just gone. They're, they're, you know, just gone. I, I don't... I hate these Thunder Tower guys. Ugh. They are a pain. Especially because they do the... Sh I hate Shockwaves. I hate enemies that do Shockwaves. It's awful. The Shockwave's a Transformer, though. That's a... He's, he's cool. I do like that Shockwave. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter how many Heartless you kill. You just gotta survive. That was easy. I and mean, then he just summons another fucking army. Yeah, see, why didn't he send them out too? Yeah, so now here is a bit of a problem. So Shan Yu comes down, has about 20 Heartless. Now remember, Sora just killed over 70 of these fuckers all by himself. And yet Mulan still feels the need to do the rocket thing. You know? In the movie, this made more sense, because it was Shan Yu and, like, a, you know, a hundred Huns charging down the mountain. So, of course, there was a bigger reason for it. Here, it's Shan Yu and 20 really weak Heartless. But, of course, they have to include this, because it was in the movie. Yeah, it's kind of weird how they don't subtitle that part. Yeah, but see, like, this is, um, like, one of a couple of scenes in this game that were very clearly included because, oh, it was in the movie, so we gotta have it. 
you know, like, again, this is a, a very good strategy. It's kind of overkill, considering it's, again, one Hun and 20 really weak Heartless. And again, keeping in mind that Sora killed over 70 of those things all by himself. So, you know, it's just drastic overkill. And it, again, it's just, oh, it was in the movie, so we gotta include it. But thankfully, it doesn't happen too much, but it happens enough where it's, like, noticeable. Like, they do, they do it, like, in the, in the Lion King, too, where, like, Sora, Donald, Goofy, Timon, and Pumbaa, like, start chanting, like, Akuna, Matata, and they do the little dance, because, oh, it was in the movie, so they gotta do it for no reason. You know, there's, like, no reason for them to do it, but they gotta, because it was in the movie. You have my trust. Thank you, Captain. Yeah, about damn time. Not really a cannonball, more like a rocket, but close. You know, that's it. I give up. I can't take this no more. Come on, Mulan. Let's quit this charade and go home, girl. No shoe. What? God, I like how he doesn't even question the fact that there's a little dragon. Can't be. He's like, oh, that dragon must be speaking the truth. Oh, boy, you're okay. They look really small here. I know it's like perspective, but they just look like really... Really small in that shot, like smaller than they should be. Again, even with the like perspective change. The punishment for high treason and dishonoring the army is death. All right, to the gummy ship. <laughs> Sora, Dal, and Goofy just become fugitives, but I mean, it doesn't matter because if they leave this world, they're all okay. And let's just assume the other soldiers will keep their uh, lips sealed on this matter. The Emperor is waiting. Move out. Oh, they don't look so good. Oh, maybe they need a nap or something. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's why uh, uh, the captain uh, let these uh, three guys join the army. He only has five soldiers. Mulan, well, and Ping, I guess. Or he did have her, but whatever. So, did she just get undressed in front of them? <laughs> ah, I'm terrible, I know. Sorry I got you in trouble. And on that day, Sora became a man. I mean, She made a man out of him. Okay, okay, I'm done. No more. Go back home. You know your daddy's gonna be steamed as a chicken dumpling. Thankfully, he will not be because they did not give him a model or a voice actor. Share the blame. Ah, uh, fuck that. Thanks. You're all wonderful friends. Yeah, it is always nice to, uh, whenever a Disney character in this series gets, uh, their role reprised. It's always nice to hear. Though, of course, uh, of course, on the other hand, whenever, like, they can't reprise their role, either because they're dead, which is the case of a lot of them, or they just don't show up to the series for whatever reason. They they usually get pretty good um, impersonators, so I suppose it's not too bad, but it's always nice to hear the original voice actors. Up uh, that hawk thing. Does that hawk have a name or falcon or whatever it is? Cuz I know Maleficent's crow has a name. It's like Diablo or something. You know, devil. I, I don't think this thing has a name, uh, nor do I care to look it up. Oh no, he lost his hat. Oh no, more heartless. Oh no, there's there's 30 of them. Quick, take down the entire mountain. We could attack him now, but... You could just attack him now, just just saying. I mean, seriously, Sora's taking <laughs> taking down bigger, badder creatures than Shan Yu. Well, you know, back when he was fourteen. Come on. Mm. Oh well. <laughs> All right, we gotta go. Let's just uh, uh, walk around and uh, chill out for a bit, okay? He is no man. He is a demon. I guess Sora would kind of be considered a massive swordman, I suppose. 
I mean, a, a key blade? Close enough. I mean, by the end of this game, he's slicing buildings into pieces, so... If that doesn't scream Master Swordsman, I don't know what does. So yeah, I guess that's not entirely inaccurate? Eh. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird to think of him that way, as a Master Swordsman. Yeah, I, I don't really go after too many of the Heartless on the way back. Yeah, oh yeah, and uh, now we do have a limit, uh, Red Rocket. Nope, not gonna make any jokes about that one. Nope. Yeah, I decided to go after this one because he hit me. Piece of shit. And I think I'd go after like one or two uh, around here. If they're, Do they even spawn here right now? I don't know. Yeah, maybe they don't. I was gonna say, I, was, I thought I could have sworn I killed a few here just to level up all the way, but oh well. <laughs> oh wow, there's more than... <laughs> Look at all these soldiers. Where do you get them all? They're multiplying. Shine is alive. He's headed this way. And why should I believe you this time? Why would she lie about that? That's the real question. <laughs> like, yeah, I know she lied about being a, you know, being a boy, but come on, why would she lie about something as serious as this? Well, then again, I suppose infiltrating the army under a disguised gender would be considered pretty serious. Oh, there he is. Haha, -ha, how'd I get up here? Guard the palace! Do not let the enemy get anywhere near the Emperor! Oh no. They were heartless the entire time. Captain, we'll secure the courtyard and you can save the Emperor. Any second now. There we go. I'm sure he will not fail at all. Yeah, now I, I do like uh yeah the limit here uh yeah, the limit here just drops all subtlety about this world and its name. Yeah, see for China. <laughs> not even gonna pretend like it's not China, huh? Then why bother calling it the Land of Dragons? Well, I guess that is a cooler name. Oh yeah, that was pretty cool. I love ending fights on a uh, on a limit. It's always great. Well, fights where it does the dramatic slow mo zoom in thing. That is. But yeah, <laughs> too many real world locations: London, China. We get uh, Paris. And, uh, let's see, uh, a place that's very clearly somewhere in Africa, deep jungle. What's the Emperor even doing out here? Um. <laughs> Gee. Whoa, wow, that, that, that was pretty easy. Why didn't he just stay and stab him while he was down? He has a sword. Eh. That, that, those were pre some pretty cool moves, though, I have to admit. Yeah, but he doesn't even have anything to say. Yeah, I, I, I think he literally says ten words in the entire game. Just as boring and bland as he is in the movies. So, or the movie, rather. I suppose that's fitting. Now, uh, yeah, the gate does have a health bar. Uh, I guess. It, it seems to be refilling? I, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't go down fast enough to be much of an issue. And now you can't attack his little falcon, because they'll kind of like dive bomb you at times. So you can't attack that, and uh, get, it'll get, uh, you can't kill it, I don't think, but you can get rid of it for a little, uh, for a set amount of time if you deplete its health. Yeah, this guy's annoying, because he uh, guards against your attacks or parries them a lot, it seems. I don't remember ever, I don't remember having so much trouble with this guy before. And now, like, seems like every time I try to attack him, like, from this point on, he blocks it. It's kind of annoying. Ah, he's almost dead. Yeah, I mean, he is the first, first real boss battle, so of course he's not going to be too bad. And, of course, I am playing on Beginner. 
Yeah, he does that like five times, and I don't know if you can hit him while he's doing it. I don't think so. Maybe as soon as he lands? But I kind of, I accidentally uh, locked onto his little bird, so. Yeah, here's one of the problems, of course, with having to end fights with a ending combo. Well, actually, it didn't turn out to be too much of a problem. But it would have been nice if I could just, like, shoot a blizzard attack at him or something instead. Or, like, one blizzard attack. I think if you do it three times in a row, it counts as a finisher. <laughs> oh, God, sword just flat out killed a person. Like, no, seriously, he just murdered a person. Not a Heartless, not a Nobody, not some giant monster. That was just a person. An evil person, yeah, but... Now, I don't think he actually killed a person in the first game. The closest he got was Maleficent, who's not a person. She's like a fairy. Te technically, I think she's supposed to be a fairy. Just a rather witch-like fairy, but still. Yeah, and her hair looks really bad here. Like, look at the hair model. Like, the one, the part where she, like, swept it away behind her ear. Looks very clumsy. Yeah, see there. Really bad. Yeah, I think those soldiers uh, in that crowd there, I think they were added into the final next version. Yeah, I don't remember them being in the original version. I might be mistaken, but... That still raises the question, if you can have a crowd here, then why can't you have them in the Olympus Coliseum? Like, fuck, I don't care if they're just the same two or three models copy and pasted. Give us a fucking audience for the Olympus Coliseum. Ugh. Your Excellency. Captain Lee. I do love the Emperor, both in this game and in the movie. How he, how he just, like, so non subtle he's like, dude, if you want to get into her pants, you're going to have to try harder. Take this, so the world will know what it is you have done for China. Thank you. So, is there any reason why his sword is shaped like that? Sir, sir. It sounds like it would, like, make it harder to fight with it, or, like, it wouldn't stab quite as well, but... Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love this. He's so great. <laughs> He's just so non-subtle about it, I love it. Well, he is the Emperor, so he can get away with it. Can I get an autograph? Thanks for everything, Sora. So is that a yes on the autograph? Now they gotta let me go back to being a guardian. They gotta But Mushu, I thought you already were a family. Oh come on. Of all people, Goofy called him out on his lie. That's that's <laughs> You know you're fucked when Goofy calls you out on being a liar. But yeah, I, I like the world visit overall. I mean, yeah, there was that one scene where it's very clearly like, okay, we gotta do this. It's, it was in the movie, so we gotta do it. But aside from that, it was fine. <laughs> I He, like, picked it up from the ground. It's weird. Usually he just, like, summons it or something. But no, he, like, picks it up like it was just lying there. I don't know why that weirds me out so much. Probably because he doesn't do that very often. I do love how he never elaborates on this. Like, people are always like, what was that? He's just always like, ah, the gate has opened. And then they're just like, eh, whatever. Fair enough. But yeah, no, again, Sora just fly out murder a person. I, I feel like we should uh, uh, focus on this. Yeah, Sora is very murder happy in this game. It's It's become something of a joke from what I can tell. That he just loves murdering people. I mean, the organization members are technically not people. Or humans. But they're still humanoid. They're essentially humans. He looked kind of depressed there for a second. Was that just me? He looked like really sad for like a split moment. Ooh. Scandalous. <laughs> okay, Mushu, you can stop laughing. <laughs> Mushi, you feeling okay? There's a hidden dragon. It actually looks really cool, but it's like completely useless, honestly. I never bothered to equip that thing. Yeah, sorry. Again, it looks cool, but it's just not really good. So I never bothered to equip it. But anyway, that's it for this video. Next time I will be going to Beast's Castle and uh, seeing how our old furry friend is doing. Oh god, no, not furry, not furry. But seriously, I'll see you then.